Good morning and welcome to Good Friday Worship at Regent Hall Online. This morning we're asking, so what's so good about Good Friday? As Christians, we, we tend to want to lean past Good Friday and lean into Resurrection Day too quickly because this day is sometimes a little bit too uncomfortable for our faith. But we know in our bones that life is always like that, a a series of little crucifixions and resurrections in honour of the big one coming. And so today we must stop and we must stay with the first disciples of Jesus in the place that they experienced at the cross where the sky turned black. So let's pray together. God of the night, where are you in the darkness of this hour? God of all love, pour into suffering and pain this hour. God of all hope, embrace our sorrowing this hour. God of grace and God of peace, enfold us in your mystery now and always. Amen.
The Crucifixion Account from Luke chapter 23. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to a place called the Skull, they nailed him to the cross, and the criminals were also crucified, one on his right, one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he re is really God's Messiah, the Chosen One. Well, our thanks to Mark and the Songsters and, of course, to Elliot. How thankful we always are for creativity across our church family here in honour of the praise of God. And now the creativity continues as Eloise Carris and Emily Hooper bring a wonderful song called Above All. And these are words really, really which remind us that even when the sky turns black, God is everlasting God. Here are the words, above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began, crucified, 
laid behind a stone you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all. Above our powers, above our kings, above our nature and our created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you are here before the world began. Above all The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. 
Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. By this time it was about noon and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Died 
A Good Friday Poem Prayer God of love, hosannas have fizzled, palm branches have turned brittle, bread is turning stale, and we are sitting silently, the mumblings of our feeble confession, on this day we tremble to call good. But what is good about Good Friday? What is good about the Holy One nailed to a cross? And what is good about violence? About the devastation of our planet? About people living in poverty? About a pandemic of disease? About a culture of hatred and fear? There is nothing good here. Yet you, God, are good. So we say instead, when suffering is real, your heart breaks. When despair runs riot, you get there first. When we're isolated, you bind your mother and your beloved disciple, and therefore us, into a new family. When we're guilt-ridden, you speak grace to us. Today you will be with me in paradise. Your love is boundless and present and good. So we offer thanks and praise. On this dreadful day, help us find understanding in the deep mysteries and questions in our hearts. Help us, in the middle of dreadfulness, discover your grace. And as we wait for Easter Day, comfort us that no dreadful power on earth, not floods, nor war, nor viruses, not even death itself, can separate us from your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
It's more than a little ironic, don't you think, that we call Good Friday good. But here we are gathered to hear a few words yet again this Good Friday about what happened on the day we killed God. This day was in fact a dreadful day. On a day over 2,000 years ago, on a hillside, on a rubbish dump outside Jerusalem, on the outskirts, three men died on a cross. This dreadful day was actually an everyday reality back then, just one of the endless dreadful days when the authorities routinely crushed political uprisings by casual torture and execution. This dreadful day of political killing, like many dreadful days around the world even today, was an ordinary sight. Except that we believe on this dreadful day, God was killed. I've prepared so many Good Friday teachings over the years about why Good Friday is good, um, that I, I almost kind of feel burnt out of words trying to say it in new, fresh ways to explain this theology, that a dreadful day is in fact a good day. It's such an old story, so central to the gospel, and yet so new and tireless. So this morning I'm quite pleased to be inspired by the poetic reflections of a colleague Christian preacher, Dr Wall, um, and as his thoughts and mine kind of mingle together, we pray that there'll be some fresh insight into this dreadful day. Were you there when the sky turned black? Were you there the day the sun hid its face and the birds stopped singing? Some of us ex have experienced in our lifetime um, a partial solar eclipse, feeling the chill in the air as our shadows grew longer. The sun was so bright at that moment that we were told not to look at it directly. So with telescopes, pinhole projectors and colanders, some of us, we watched in awe as the moon blocked out the sun. Were you there when the sky turned black? Many of us can remember a time and maybe are still experiencing this time when it feels like the sky has turned black. We know the sting of bereavement, the desolation unearthed in the wake of death. The poet W.H. Auden knew that grief and wrote a poem called Stop the Clocks. Here is a little stanza for you. The stars are not wanted now, put out every single one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to any good. And for some of us, the sky turns black from loneliness, from a broken relationship, from the spectre of guilt and shame, or a sense of hopelessness about the world, our community, our nation, our families, our personal lives, or from illness or mental illness. For these reasons and a whole lot more, we find ourselves calling out in the same way that Christ called out on the cross, my God, why have you forsaken me? We're told on the day we call Good Friday, the sky turned black as creation grieved the death of the Saviour. God had come amongst us as a baby in a manger, new life, new hope, then a teacher on the streets and then a healer of wounds. God had come to party at our weddings, to laugh with us and to cry with us, to weep with us when our friends died, to challenge the powerful and the corrupt, to break bread with the outcast and the marginalised. God had come to bring joy and healing for us all and to restore the creation that God loves so much. Instead, on this dreadful day, God is mocked, condemned by the religious and abandoned by his followers. God is accused, tortured and executed by the state. The sky darkens, the cosmos groans and Jesus dies. Like the solar eclipse, our attempts to look directly at this event are blinding for we're unable to see any cheap, 
easy explanation as to why things had to be this way. We can only glimpse, squint, pick out moving shadows of spiritual understanding on this terrible Good Friday. Some say, trying to kind of wrap it all up in, uh, in, in, in kind of method and ideas, that God absorbed all our sin on this day, that Jesus died in our place that we might live. Some say God wanted to show that nothing, even death on a cross, could limit, God, could limit God's love, his forgiveness and grace. Some say that Christ's death was the result of God living in a violent, um, broken world. And, and this was his radical, compassionate life pushing back. Whatever the whys and wherefores, on the day Jesus was executed, the Bible says the sky turned black. And from this, faith assures us of just a few things today. That Christ feels what it's like to be alone and in pain with us. That Christ feels what it is to see relationships falter and loved ones lose hope and to experience betrayal. Christ feels what it's like to face mockery, rejection and death. And because of this, God in Christ is with us. Because of this, we may experience God's presence in our loneliness, God's love in our loss, God's hope in our desolation. Because of Good Friday, this, the Bible says, will pass. As light overcomes the darkness, so life will overcome death. Soon we're going to witness the joy of Easter, the empty tomb, the victory of love, but not today. Easter will not be Easter without Good Friday. So despite every desire in our bones as Christians to skip this moment and to run from it as far as we can, today we must sit at the foot of the cross. Today we must remember that the sky went dark. Today we remember the death of our Saviour. Today we weep. Today we wait, today we stand together at the cross. Amen. But how as Christians do we stay at the cross with those first followers of Jesus in their desolation, in that deathly experience, when we know that Sunday's coming, when the sun's gonna come over the hill ablaze with God's glory? As people of hope, we're probably not even meant to get right into their experience. It's impossible. But we do need to use our imaginations to experience this out of control. Good Friday ending when the sky turned black. We must do this today. And so here's a poem to help us with that called Endings by Roddy Hamilton. When the alleluias fall silent and the story comes to a stop, And the words fade out mid-sentence, and even the stones keep quiet. And those who still find there's something to say shout for the wrong side. Then you know the Lord of life has finished the parable with one final sentence. It is finished. And the tragedy bows its final bow in the world and is entombed. And all that remains is the fear that we may never find our voices again and we will forget how to speak of love now the word has been silenced and the story run out of endings. Of course, as Christians, we live in two worlds. The world where the sky is black today and the world where on Sunday morning the sun creeps over the hill to set a, a God's glory ablaze again. So even on this dreadful Friday, we choose thankfulness and say, worthy is the lamb seated on the throne. Here's Anna Sharman to bring us these wonderful words. for 
the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love alone. Thank you for the me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne. Crown you now with many grace. the cross Lord. thank you for the price you paid bearing all my sin and shame in love you came and gave amazing grace thank you for this love Lord thank you for the Watch me in your cleansing flow Now all I know Your forgiveness and embrace Worthy is the Lamb Seated on the throne Crown you now with many grace And so to the benediction, it takes faith to wait without hope, to trust that although there is no sense to this, we must do it anyway. So hope, hope despite, hope regardless, hope still. Hope where we had ceased to hope, hope amid what threatens hope, hope beyond what we had hoped. Hope that defies expectations, hope that questions what we knew before, hope that makes a way where there is none. Hope that takes us past our fear, hope that calls us into life, hope that blesses those to come. Hope. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you so much for joining us for Good Friday Worship at Regent Hall Online today. We hope you'll also be able to connect with us again on Easter Sunday for our, our Easter Day worship. You just go to our Regent Hall uh, Facebook and YouTube channels to find us at 11 o'clock. The theme's going to be Living Resurrection and the teaching will be brought to us by Richard on Sunday. Also, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock on Easter Saturday, we're going to be streaming on those same channels, YouTube and Facebook for Regent Hall, um, an event called The Day In Between. And this is going to be a celebration of Easter themed music brought to us by our many music groups at Regent Hall, the band, the songsters, our worship team for him and some other soloists too. And it's an event going to be hosted by our own Joe and Sarah Rose. So it should be a lovely Easter weekend event. And we hope that you'll feel welcome to join us at seven o'clock tomorrow on Regent Hall Facebook and YouTube channels at seven o'clock. Last Good Friday, Nathaniel Watchhorn composed a beautiful piece called A Hill Called Calvary. And this year he's worked on that. So he's rewritten uh, that piece as the first part of a two piece musical composition. So this morning we're going to hear part one and it's A Hill Called Calvary Friday. And then as we commence worship on Sunday morning, Easter day, we're going to listen to and watch the second part um, on a hill called Calvary Sunday. So thank you to Nan Nathaniel and the team who've put this together. Let's watch now, let's pray, and let's stay with the disciples for whom today the sky turns black. God bless you.